Nicholas Rainbow, thank you so much for being here. I recently just hit 390 subscribers, which is amazing, so thank you so much for that. And I would also like to say thank you for coming this week, and I appreciate you guys. My hands have been so full with my homeschooling right now, but I have definitely made sure I've made time for you guys, and I am posting every single Friday, so make sure to check in every Friday to watch a new video. And I'm super excited to be doing this. I love dogs, and I feel like lots of people are always wondering if they're ready for a dog. So I feel like this is a very good video to get out, you know? And then I also want to say make sure to comment and let me know what type of dog breeds you have, just because I'm curious, because I have a Chihuahua, and like I'm just curious to know what other people have. And then I'm also curious to know like what you're looking into, like what type of dog are you in tune what type of dog you want to get in your future so yeah comment about that and as always make sure to subscribe and like because I wouldn't be at 390 subscribers without you guys and make sure you click the bell so you get notifications every week and make sure to like so I know you like my content so yeah I guess that's it so without further ado let's go ahead and get started so one of the most common questions somebody asks themselves whenever they're looking into dogs is are they ready for a dog and I feel like that's a hard question to answer because there's so many different like parts of owning a dog. You have to feed it, you have to walk it, you have to train it, you have to love it, you have to give it attention. And I feel like going through all those is so hard to just think about, especially whenever like you have friends that have dogs and it seems like their dog doesn't bark and it's so easy. Well, the reason is because they trained it. But I mean, are you ready? Can you train it? Do you have what it takes, you know? So the first question I'd like to ask is, are you sure you're a dog person? You might be a cat person. And the reason why I'm asking this is because cats are a lot easier to take care of. And don't quote me on that. I'm just saying within my own experience. And the reason for that is because a cat, you don't really have to train. I mean, you have to train it to use a litter box. But other than that, that's pretty much it. And then you have to feed it. But I feel like with a dog, you have to like walk it and you have to feed it and you gotta train it to like sit and to stay and you gotta train it to not use the bathroom in the house cause like that could take so long and alone. Teaching a dog, potty training a dog can take like a year. Our chihuahua took like a year to potty train. My parents were so upset. Like we tried so hard. She just couldn't get it. But like a cat, our cats learned how to potty train in like two weeks. And then you have to like change out the litter box, which I know is a pain that can stink up your house. But I feel like you have to clean up the yard, like with dog turds everywhere. So I feel like that's like equally as hard. So, I mean, it's up to you. In my opinion, taking care of a dog is a lot harder. So make sure you're a dog person and not a cat person, because it might be easier for you to get a cat at the moment than a dog. So that's something to think about. The second thing to think about is. Do you have an animal that lives in a cage or a, an aquarium or I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, like an animal that lives in a box in your house. I don't know where else they live. Um and if so, do you take care of it? Because that may reflect on how you take care of your dog. I know for me, I didn't really take care of my bunny, but I really do take care of my dog. So it might not, but that's also something to think about. If you don't take care of your hamster, or your guinea pig, then you might not be able to take care of a dog. So that's uh, definitely something to think about and just put in your brain and to think over for a while. The third thought I'd like for you to think about is about your future. Are you currently, maybe you are currently right now, able to get a dog? It'd be a perfect fit for you. But maybe in your near future, you're going to be going to college or you're going to be going, or you're going to be moving or you're going to be having children. These are all things you need to be thinking about because moving might, with a puppy might cause you distractions and you won't be giving the dog what it needs as a puppy to train it. And then if you're going to college then you're probably going to be leaving your puppy with your parents or maybe you're going to have a house and it's going to be hard to deal with the expenses of getting a new house and a new dog. So those are things to think about. And then if you're having uh, possible children in the future, that's something to think about because if you are, then that's great. Just make sure you get a dog that's known for being good with babies or small children because, or older children if you're adopting. Um, and the reason with that being is because if you get a pit bull, they're known for not being uh, child friendly, they're known for being protective.
that and make sure you're doing, getting the right dog for the right task or for your near future. The fourth and final question I'm going to be asking you is, do you have the time? Can you make time out of your day to go and take care of this living, breathing animal that has feelings? And the reason for that, why I'm asking, is because maybe you go to work. But maybe you have, like, children at home that are going to play with it. Or maybe you have a wife or a husband that stays at home. Or a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. Maybe you have someone that can stay at home and take care of this dog. All day. If that does happen, you come home from work, you probably won't be the dog's best friend. Just to let you know. And if you don't care, that's fine. I'm just letting you know so that you're not like, oh, this dog doesn't like me. It's because the other person's spending more time with it, and it might be interacting with them more and creates a stronger bond. And then, um, if you're going to work and you don't have anyone at home, what's your dog going to do? You need to make sure your dog at least has a bone to chew on or is occupied, maybe like just from the TV so it has noises so it's not paranoid listening outside. But I feel like when it's a puppy, it's extremely important to be there for it. Once it becomes an adult, though, I feel like you could definitely leave it for, like, a few hours, like, to go to the grocery store or to go to work, you know. But as a puppy, you really need to be there for it and make sure that it feels loved and grows up to be a happy, healthy dog. Because if you're not there for it, it's just going to get angry, and all that pent-up anger is just going to lead to a lot of stress. And you don't want to have a stressed-out dog because then they don't want to learn, they don't want to eat, and they tend to become very unhealthy um, physically and mentally. So make sure you have the time for your dog. And with time for your dog also includes training it. A puppy or a dog you got from like a shelter needs a lot of training. You need to potty train them, you need to uh, give them simple trainings like no barking. Because people who have barky dogs, it tends to be because they never fully trained them or felt bad whenever they had to train them. You can't feel bad whenever your dog is misbehaving. That's not hurting or harming the dog, it's just making them afraid or pain in the moment. It's like instant pain. Like when you have children and they misbehave, you yell at them real quick. A dog, if you yell at it, no. It's going to know right away it did something wrong and it's not going to want to do that again. So you need to train your dog. It takes time. Um, maybe you'll go and you'll buy a trainer. So make sure you have the money and the expenses for your dog. Because a dog is a high expense. Um, you have to buy potty pads if it's a little puppy and you're training it. Pee pads tend to help. You have to buy training sometimes if you don't want to hand if you don't want to train it yourself because you have a busy schedule. Um, you have to feed it every day. You have to give it water. You know. You have to make sure you're there for it and giving it lots of love because a dog without love won't return love to you no matter how hard you try. So that's pretty much it about my questions. So if you are looking into a specific dog and you're not sure which one you want yet, I suggest you do some research, like heavy research and find out what you need. Because like if you're allergic to dogs, you, that doesn't mean you can't get a dog. That doesn't like take it out. That just means you need a dog that's non-allergenic. So like a Maltese would be a really good dog for an older couple um, or either somebody who's allergic to Malteses, but they are prone to barking so you have to make sure you do teach them not to bark. If you live on a farm or like a rural, rural area, you're going to be wanting to look into an English Springer Spaniel because those guys love to have lots of exercise and the room to exercise, so that might be one you're interested in. Black coat flat-coated retriever. Or maybe you are a family of teenagers looking in to get a dog. A flat-coated retriever would be a really good dog to get. You just really need to do the research because like you could be a teen just like me that lives with their parents and you're looking into a dog. A type of dog that would be great for you would probably be a whippet or a terrier of some kind. And I feel like you could only really learn the breeds you like and the breeds that are good for your family and the place you are in right now and for your future by going ahead and researching and I feel like that's the only way you'll truly get a dog that fits your needs because there are so many dog breeds and I feel like if you just go to the pound or the store and you just pick the first dog you see when that dog gets older when that puppy or dog gets older and starts to live with you they might be different and not behave the way you want them to behave like if you get a dog that's super energetic and you live in a small area you live in like a city, you're a city dweller, then 
that dog is going to start tearing stuff up and running through the house and always being depressed and sad because it's not getting the attention and the things it needs. As a dog, certain dogs need certain things. Just like Maltese's need training. Um, a retriever, like a golden retriever, would need exercise. So you would make sure you would go through and you would see exactly what dog fits your needs. As always, of course, I am going to be supporting getting a pound puppy just because I feel like they need you, they need your help. There's so many dogs in pounds, and I feel like the only difference between a pound dog and a purebred dog is their styles. If you want a dog that looks really good, get a purebred dog. I get it. It doesn't always happen. Like, maybe you thought about getting a pound puppy, but the one time you went to, like, the store down the street you end up finding the perfect dog for you and that happens sometimes the dog picks you so it's really up to you guys exactly how you find your dog what dog you want if you should get a dog at all um, I definitely go through and think about the questions I asked you earlier and I hope that you guys do lots of research and you find the perfect puppy for you and thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys next Friday, because I'm making videos every Friday now. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys have a great day. Good luck puppy finding, and I'll see you guys.